Welcome back to my channel. I'm May, a solo boater living aboard my 62 foot narrowboat home. Here you will find a real life snapshot of what it's like to live on the cut. Today we will be jump starting batteries, doing standard boat jobs and avoiding disaster. Hope you enjoy. Good morning. Welcome back. Today I'm going to go on a little cruise. I need to move a little bit. I've overstayed again. But it's been icy, so there's leniency there. It's been very icy. I want to go down two locks. I've never gone down a lock by myself, so that's going to be a new thing for me. And then I'm going to turn around in a winding hole and I'm going to head back the other direction. So yeah, that's today's plan. A few jobs to do, get some water, have a look at my stern greaser and my bilge pump area just to check it over. Mm. Oh yeah, start the engine. That's going to be fun as well. <laughs> I've been having problems with my starter battery. I can't seem to get the engine going. And the only way to get it going is using a pack like this, which is like a really, really effective boosting pack, which charges it and gives it the oomph that it needs to get the engine going. So I think if you watched my last one of my videos, um, I need water. It's up there, it's popping up now if you want to watch it. I was given a starter battery by a really, really lovely boater, Rob. And it's this one here, but I potentially think it might be compromised. At least then I can remove the possibility that it's the starter motor. If the battery works fine, it's not the starter motor. Right, let's hook her up and turn her on. to balance the battery pack on my jerry can because it's really short wire. <laughs> Now this is really interesting for anyone who wants to test to see if they have water in their diesel tank. Water finding paste. I'm going to put it on the end of a stick and then I'm going to put it in my diesel tank and discover whether I have water or not in there. Get yourself a long stick that you can put into your diesel tank and rub the paste on the end of the stick. It should be this yellow brownie colour to start with. When you remove the stick from the diesel tank, if it's still a yellowy colour, then you're on to a winner. As you can see, with a bit of water on the end of the stick, it turns red. Yay, no water in the tank! <laughs> <laughs> Next job on the list, removing water from the bilge. To prevent rust, I've put a temporary Tupperware under the stern greaser to catch the drips. Annoyingly, I now can't get the box out because it's full of water and I'd have to tip it on its side to get it out. Don't! So I tried water vacuuming it out and quickly gave up. I need a new water collecting tub. Future May can sort that one out. Some chia flax mix, cinnamon, cranberries, milk, and then I slice some banana on top. Add a little kiwi. Love a cheeky kiwi. A dollop of jam in the middle. Mmm, get it in there. Some cacao nibs, some yogurt. Oh shit. <coughs> some of May's roasted nuts, and a little bit of extra milk. Right. Who's ready to go? I have to be really careful when I go down a lock because there's something here called the sill, which is this huge big metal thing. 
and if I were to get my the back end of my boat stuck on it then it can go like beep bye bye boaty <laughs> Along came my guardian angel, Donna. She warns me that the water level is very low and to be extra careful. So her husband, Pete, and Nelson the dog all help me through the locks and stick around to make sure I'm okay. One interesting turn of events. There I was thinking I'd be turning the boat round today when uh, something's happened. Someone's left a lock open or something and the water is ridiculously low. There's usually one main reason why the water level can go down so quickly and that's due to somebody maybe forgetting to close a lock and I just ask you if you ever go on a boating holiday, if you ever walk past a lock on your lovely dog walk or even if you are a boater, please don't forget to close the locks behind you, it's really important. Um, because it could have been so much worse today, if Donna and Pete hadn't been there I could have travelled down. I could have got stuck, could have been completely had to abandon ship and jump into the canal and, you know, worst case scenario really, but it could happen. That's it for another week, guys. I want to say a huge, huge, massive thank you to everybody who donated last week. I feel really, really grateful and I just can't believe how many lovely people follow me and want to help me out and support me. Get this boat ship shape. So yeah, it brought a huge smile to my face. Thank you so much. Big up to Colin, Derek, to Kevin and Tim. Chris, not on the water yet. <laughs> Debbie, Robert, Tracy, Elise, Pete the Neat, Ian and Hayley and another Ian. Thank you guys so much. And also a big, big up and thanks to my neighbours, Graham and Yvonne, you guys really have put a big smile on my face this week too just for being you um so next week i would really like to do a question and answer q a video where you can ask me anything and i will do my best to answer those questions so feel free to email me or you can comment below and yeah any questions you've got from personal questions to boat questions to anything please ask away I won't be answering anything that involves me romantically, however. So please don't ask me stuff like that. Thanks. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Lots of love. Bye-bye for now.